I'm Nolan Bowie. I'm a uh, senior fellow and adjunct lecturer in public policy at the Kennedy School of Government, Harvard University. Uh, this is my concise, short summary version of uh, literacy policy, which is a facet of information policy, per se. What is literacy? Uh, literacy is a lot more than the ability to read and write and do uh, simple computational skills. But even with those basic skills, close to half of the adult population in the United States has insufficient skills. They're at levels one and two, the bottom two ranks of literacy. Uh, in essence, they become dysfunctional the deeper we go into the information uh, age, into the knowledge economy, uh, which requires new skills, higher skills. It requires lifelong learning. Uh, it requires the ability to learn how to learn. Um, what we need, well, let me tell you, there's no single literacy. I, I, I don't see the term literacies often written down, but sometimes it is. But literacy itself encompasses not only uh, alphanumeric literacy or text in prose, but also what is increasingly called information literacy or networked literacy or technology literacy or civic or political literacy. Uh, literacy is an enabling tool. Literacy itself is a technology. It changes as fast as the technologies of communications change. Literacy is a uh, basic skill which we need to communicate. I would add that not only does it provide one with the means of critical thinking, but also critical acting. And the reason that uh, literacy is required of everyone is because uh, we don't live to be 200, and uh, we get most of our information vicariously uh, from the outside. And literacy is sort of a skill of, uh, it's a pull technology skill. It's when we want information, we know where to go, and we can pull it out of a resource, as opposed to a lesser literacy skill of being a good listener or viewer and having information pushed at us, uh, like, say, a television station will push out information through a signal, or the internet increasingly is pushing information following the television model. When that happens, you're more apt to get propaganda. What's the difference between propaganda and other kind of information? Sometimes not a lot, but the propagandist tends not to disclose uh, who the person is, or what their agenda is, or what their motives are, and sometimes you may not agree with it. So you sort of endanger yourself. Um, Throughout the world, there are a uh, literacy or illiteracy is a substantial problem. Um, I have a, uh, a chart here which I will make available to you um, with a listing of uh, nations with the worst literacy uh, record in the world. At the top of the list is Niger, uh, in which 79% of the males and 93% of the females, and I assume that the population is even in terms of gender. Uh, so 86% of the pop adult population is illiterate. Um, Burkina Faso, 81%. Uh, Nepal, 72.5%. Mali, 69%. And it goes down. Uh, these same nations have the shortest life expectancy at birth and the, probably the uh, lowest quality of life uh, in other areas. Uh, can li literacy turn it around? Not of and by itself. Uh, Literacy is an enabling technology. Uh, literacy is both content and information technology. We have to guarantee universal access to all facets of literacy. The term digital divide tends to refer to uh, a recognition that uh, people are better off if they have access to the internet and PC internet connectivity and PCs are an internet appliance. Well, I disagree with that somewhat. Uh, what I think is essential is ready universal access to universal ready access to relevant information. And what's relevant information? Well, it depends on the individual's needs or societal needs or the group or organizational needs. What's relevant? and it's also uh, time-sensitive. 
and you have to look at also the quality of that information. Uh, next, you need, because information is increasingly available only in electronic or digital format, uh, ready access to appropriate information technology, which may or may not mean the Internet, but in many cases may mean a book, a tutor, a pencil and paper, uh, again, what is appropriate for that individual to understand, and within a language that that person can understand. Again, the Internet right now is mostly English, 80% uh, of the uh, websites. That may change uh, 10 years from now, maybe mostly in Mandarin or some other language we don't know. Uh, is the uh, problem of illiteracy confined to third world or developing countries? No. Uh, I have an uh, article here that appeared in the um, Boston Globe dated September 15, 1995, where it says that almost half of the adults in this state don't read well. They read at the lowest levels, one and two. A more recent article uh, in the Washington Post uh, from last year said that 65% of the adults in the District of Columbia uh, read at levels one and two, the lowest levels of uh, uh, literacy, which means that uh, uh, they would be uh, dysfunctional in an information-based, knowledge-based economy. Uh, they would lack the skills to be productive, creative, um, self-realized, uh, all that they can be. Um, more recent, uh, also last year, an uh, article from uh, uh, The Globe, uh, and I just cut out the uh, part on the statistics, that show reading gaps. This is a study done by the National Assessment of Educational Progress uh, that shows that uh, uh, it's an assessment of uh, reading pro proficiency levels within the fourth grade. 63% uh, of uh, black school children in the fourth grade are, are not reading at proficiency levels. 58% uh, of Hispanic or Latino kids, 57% uh, of, of American Indians or, or Native Americans are also reading below level, whereas 27% uh, of whites are reading at below level and 22% of Asian Pacific Islanders are reading at the, that low level. Um, uh, you might ask why Asian Pacific Islanders read uh, have better reading skills since they tend to be bilingual, bicultural, uh, than uh, native-born whites. Uh, good question. Um, I think part of the uh, reason for uh, low, blacks, uh, low reading scores among blacks is still a residue of uh, history of uh, being having been slaves and having uh, laws that had, that prohibited uh, the teaching of blacks how to read or write, and then followed by uh, a long history of uh, in, inferior schools and Jim Crow segregation, and also uh, uh, expectation and, and continued uh, disparity in terms of quality of school and education. Which comes to another question. Can we afford to have uh, large or even small portions of our population, of our workforce, uh, having inadequate skills to participate in the uh, emerging global knowledge-based economy because what's implied by globalization is competition. Compe what's implied by competition is winners and losers. So the question is, who ought to win? If it's us, who is us? Is it all of us? Or should the beneficiaries of our public policies just be uh, wealthy, uh, those who already have had advantages and privileges, uh, or of multinational corporations, or corporations per se, since they're not necessarily citizens. Uh, and, uh, or should we uh, look at it more broadly and say that uh, what makes America America, what makes our society our society, is its people. They're the citizens, they're the consumers, they're the workforce. And if so, how should we go about investing in them in terms of uh, ensuring that they have uh, literacy skills? Literacy skills never stop. They're always advancing. They're always changing. So how do we go about providing lifelong learning opportunities uh, to the entire population? Uh, I would suggest um, uh, a radical uh, legislation uh, based on our own history. Uh, after the Soviet Union successfully launched Sputnik, uh, Congress during the Eisenhower administration passed the National Defense Education Act. Uh, uh, that uh, Eisenhower administration also created the uh, federal highway system based on national defense rationale. Um, so the nature of the uh, world, post-Cold War world, uh, is increasingly one uh, about competition for markets and domination of markets. Uh, if that's true, to the extent that it is true, uh, again, 
uh, what's being sold in the markets in many cases are information products, uh, information services. Uh, um, how do we enable our population to uh, uh, acquire those skills uh, and, and continue to develop them? Uh, I would suggest something like a national defense, education, communications, and information act. Uh, so the government uh, uh, provides the means that we can all be all that we can be. That uh, we, uh, right now we can no longer afford to uh, incarcerate, say, more than two million people and take them not only out of the workforce, uh, but keeping them away from uh, relevant information and knowledge and literacy. Uh, the 1992 landmark uh, study on uh, literacy in the United States uh, showed that, in particular, Illiteracy was associated with uh, uh, low incomes uh, and poverty, with uh, uh, welfare, with incarceration. So there may be a, a, a nexus or a link between that. Um, give people uh, adequate literacy early on, uh, and perhaps uh, uh, they'll uh, be more successful. Um, another project or program I think we ought to look, take a hard look at is um, universal access to preschool. Uh, by the time they're in the fourth grade, it may be too late. Uh, everyone ought to have uh, uh, information advantages uh, uh, if, in fact, uh, we're going to be competitive in the uh, information age. Um, where do we go from here? Uh, how do we mobilize? Uh, uh, how do we uh, get others to talk about literacy as being important. Uh, why li literacy in the first place? Uh, we make an assumption that uh, we need it for the workforce, but we also need it to become uh, effective citizens, and democracy itself needs a uh, lit literate citizenry in order to keep it in check. Democracy, in the final analysis, is a system of governance based not on trust, but on distrust. And as such, it requires uh, uh, that those who govern, uh, the representatives of the people, uh, have to be accountable to the people. It requires that uh, citizens are informed, not just informed, but well informed, uh, enough to know whether or not they're being adequately served. Because uh, if you read the uh, Bill of Rights, for example, or the Declaration of uh, Independence, citizens have a duty to uh, put in the new government uh, if, in fact, it is not serving the will of the people. Uh, so the people have a responsibility to know, and the only way they can do that is through uh, literacy. And that uh, also explains this uh, new kind of literacy, this new emerging literacy, or what we're recognizing as a new literacy, uh, civic literacy, which may also be referred to as uh, political literacy. Um, the uh, results of a literate population is not only uh, people who can read and utilize uh, tools effectively to uh, uh, maneuver through their environments, it uh, enables them to think and act critically. Uh, and I'll stop there.